Welcome back to Your Greatness Magnified. We're gonna be talking this week about busyness. I know you're feeling busy. And this is a term that I hear myself talking about, I hear so many of my clients talking about, and yet often when the concept of busy comes up, we're not feeling very resourceful. And we're often not moving forward. So I really wanna deconstruct this a little bit so that we can be most productive and focused. So let's look at the top things that are pulling us away from focus and that are stopping us from being our greatest version of ourselves. So number one, a lack of long-term thinking. That when we feel really busy, we focus on the things that need to be done right now. We're firefighting, we're putting on that fire cape, we're jumping in, and sometimes that makes us feel really good. Oh good, I got something off my to-do list. Or it was a really high attention requiring activity, and I can remember at the end of the day what I got accomplished. And yet if it's not helping the long-term, it just creates this continual sense of busyness that's hard to really Break that cycle. So one thing is pull yourself back and think what is what I need to do, work on long term and how am I building in some capacity to do that? Number two, we're not saying no. Some of us don't feel we can say no. There's lots of my coaching clients that I've worked with and then having a true belief that there's nothing they can say no to in their family, with their boss, with their colleagues. And yet oftentimes when we pull this apart a bit, there is an, a reason why it feels like a need that I need to say yes all the time, that it actually serves us in some way. If you can't say no, if you can't prioritize what's most important, then no wonder you're feeling busy. So what are you saying no to? And if you don't feel you can say no, why? How is it serving you? Third thing, if we have a culture that we're needing to be there for us to truly contribute value. I worked with an organization that they had put all kinds of systems in place to reduce the workload on busy middle managers. Great project in theory. And yet they couldn't figure out why everybody was feeling just as stressed, if not more so, six months after they launched this whole other layer of leadership. And what they found was that this culture that they had in the organization, that if you weren't present, that you didn't matter, well, no wonder. Now you just had two leaders showing up for middle manager to all of these meetings as opposed to one. So busyness can come from that culture of I have to be present, I have to be participating, I have to know what's going on or else I don't matter. And here's one more for this blog and then I'm gonna share with you some more in the next. That there's a lack of collaboration that's shared. That I somehow have to be the one to mastermind and to manage an entire project initiative, my team, and that I can't do this in a collaborative way with the people who report to me, with other leaders, with other departments. And you know what? I, I completely understand that. The onus at the end of the day is on you and perfect is the enemy of progress. And it's certainly perfection and, and having to do it all yourself is the enemy of collaborative relationships. So how could you share responsibility? How could you share your your opportunity to celebrate a success with somebody else. They will thank you for it, for being able to contribute their best, and also it takes some of the burden off of your shoulders. I hope you found this as a great opportunity to reflect on some of the reasons why you perhaps are feeling busy, and that maybe one or two of the things that we've talked about today will help you take a second sober thought and perhaps try another strategy to get a little less busy and therefore a lot more productive and focused. My name's Sarah McDaniel. Be well and be great.